it's me, Becca Hilburn, and um, today I wanted to talk to you guys about my three favorite Copic marker alternatives. Uh, the Shinhan Twin Touch, the Blick Studio Brush Marker, and Prismacolor, uh, the Prismacolors that have the brush tip. Uh, Prismacolor Premier, right? Um, sorry, I'm trying to open my Prismacolors. <laughs> So I have a pretty sizable Copic collection that I've amassed over like five years in a trip to Japan, but I know not everybody has the funds to in have such a collection or the ability to buy Copic markers open stock, which is how I did a lot of my Copic purchasing. And um, for those of you, this, this isn't really aimed at those of you who can't order things online because the only marker you're going to be able to easily find pretty much any art supply store is going to be the Prismacolors. But hey, they're one of three, so that's not bad. Um, if you live near a Dick Blick, you're in luck because the Blick Studio markers are carried, carried open stock and in sets, um, but I haven't seen Shinhan Twin Touch sold open stock in stores since Jerry's Artorama carried them for a minute two years ago. Um, Fortunately, it's not my favorite favorite. I just think it's pretty good. So I'm going to start with the one pretty much everybody's familiar with, Prismacolor Premier Markers. Now, um, three years ago, Prismacolor introduced a brush tip to their twin tip markers. And as you can see, it's a nice big brush. So what you have with their brush markers is a bullet nib, which is disappointing. Nobody really likes bullet, well, maybe somebody likes bullet nibs, but I haven't met an artist who really likes bullet nibs when brushes are an option. And a very generous, large brush. Oh, there we go. What's nice about Prismacolor markers is they work with, that's not Copic, that is, oh, that's dry, sorry, that's Copic Chow blender, but they work with, um, Prismacolor inks work with Copic inks, and they have their own blender too, I just don't happen to own one, um, but they come in colors that Copic doesn't necessarily make. So a lot of intense purples, a lot of really bright, intense greens. Prismacolor is really good at that, and Copic is not necessarily really good at that. And I have a, oh, I should pull out. Ooh, sorry if I'm making you guys sick. Um, I have a really small collection of Prismacolors because I'm just, I am only purchasing the ones that um, I can't get in Blick, or I can't get in Shinhan, or I can't get in Copic. And it's not that Prismacolors are bad. They're not. They're great. And the new brush is great. Um, and I really like it. I I don't know. I guess I just like the Blick Studio markers better and the Shinhan Twin Touch markers better. So as I demonstrate these markers, I'm going to line them up. And our comparison marker is a Copic Sketch. So Copic Sketch first then a Copic Chow, and now I need to put down a Prismacolor Premier. And as you can see, they have a round body rather than um, the sort of oval body that the Copic has. All right, so the next marker I wanna to talk to you guys about is the Shinhan Twin Touch. They look like this. Sometimes you can get them at really big conventions like um, like NYCC or SDCC. And um, the touch markers come in two types. There's a bullet nib type that has a chisel nib on the other end, and then there's this kind which has a brush nib and a chisel nib. And they're a little bit stiffer than Prismacolors or Copics. They're fine, they're refillable. Uh, the only markers I'm going to talk about today that aren't refillable are the Blick Studio markers. The Colorless Blender for Touch. They also work with Copics. Um, some of them smell a little stronger than others and they pretty much all smell stronger than Copic markers. So if you have a sensitive nose, that's something to keep in mind. You might not want to 
uh, shouldn't, t twin touch might not be the marker for you. Okay, so the last marker, ah, sorry, the last marker I'm going to talk to you guys about is one I haven't seen a lot of people talking about, and I have a blog post reviewing them in depth coming up soon. It's already written. It's in the queue. It just needs to happen. Um, our Blick Studio brush markers. Now, Blick still makes their original studio markers, and those are round, and they look a lot like Prismacolors, but they don't have a brush, and they aren't as juicy, and I really just think the studio mark brush markers are so much nicer than their um than their regular original bullet nib markers um the colors are a little less saturated than copic but they're so much cheaper these are what i recommend for kids who um have already shown um i'm not gonna say talent because i wasn't one of those kids who had talent i drew a lot but i was never the one anybody bet on right so i'm never going to promote kids with talent how about we say kids with determination kids with drive kids who are putting the time in to get better even if they're not there yet um so i really recommend these for uh, kids teenagers crafters who know they're going to want alcohol based markers who are really excited about them but it's not really worth the investment in a large set of Copics while you're still kind of finding your voice these are great so um, I think all of these are very comparable to Copics um, they're certainly cheaper the Shinhan Twin Touches are getting a little more expensive as they get harder to find. You may not be able to find them open top, uh, open stock. You may not be able to find them. Uh, you may have a hard time finding them, period, for less than $5. Um, when I bought mine, they were 4 and I was pretty pleased. And you can get refills for them, and you can replace the nibs. Oh, oh, Prismacolors aren't refillable either. Okay, so I guess the only marker I talked about today that is like Copic but not Copic that is refillable are the Shinhan Twin Touch markers. And I'm just lining them up so you can get, let's see if I can get rid of those shadows. I'm sorry. I'm still working on lighting situation in my studio for recording. I actually don't use my drafting table very much. I like to work on the floor. And I've um, posted shots like this on my blog, um, natosoup.blogspot.com. You just need to search for alcohol-based markers and you should be able to find most of it. I just thought a video might be good for those of you who um, they just learn from videos better. Here is a Copic original where I replaced the, um, the nib that came with it the chisel nib with a different brush nib. It's not nearly as nice as you can see as the super brush. So, um, yeah, pretty much all of them, any marker I'm going to recommend is going to, for the most part, have a really substantial, juicy, flexible brush nib because I feel like those give the best results. Those are the easiest to use. It takes the least amount of time. Um, it, you can lay down color fast so you can do multiple passes of color in the time it would take you to do a single pass of color with a chisel nib or a bullet nib. Uh, well maintained brush nibs um, keep a point. They, uh, they don't get uh, kind of beaten up so they can sometimes put in a finer point than a bullet nib can. I guess, I guess we can demonstrate. Uh, so that's the bullet nib of a Prismacolor Premier. And this is me pressing as lightly as I can with the brush. As you can see, it's pretty much the same size, right? I'm really glad that com more companies are offering um, a brush, a super brush option in addition to the bullet nib. Um, so those of you who do read my blog are familiar, you might not be familiar with what the covers look like, but you're familiar with what the contents look like. 
So this is my marker test for the Prismacolor Premier. As you can see, it works with Copics fairly well. Uh, all of the things that Copic doesn't like, it, the Prismacolors don't like. They work well with multi-liner, microns, pit pins, even the high-tech C gel pins. Here's my test for the Shinhan Twin Touch. Very similar. Uh, it did disrupt Micron a little bit more than Copic does. I think I have to switch to my other book for the rest of my tests. I have a lot of them. And there's some markers I'd really like to revisit. Like, I only bought three Neo Pico 2s because they were kind of expensive and hard to get. Um, and I love to go back and do a modern field test with those. And when I say modern, I mean I, I draw like a full figure of Kara, my, the character from my comic, and I render her. Um, I usually try to get skin tones, hair tones, and like um, shading stuff, uh, maybe one or two bright colors because I feel like if a company doesn't offer good skin tones I'm probably not gonna like anything they offer skin tones are the most important to me but when you're making when you're assembling your own set you need to find the colors that work for you for what you do if you like to draw pink skinned aliens you need to buy a lot of pinks if you like to draw flowers you need to buy um, a, I actually think you probably need the widest variety if you render a variety of flowers because flowers have all sorts of colors um, people are a little easier to render than flowers. And if you really want cheap, um, you should check out my video on fine color markers and Shanghai touch markers, because they're alright. I mean, the markers I covered in this mini video are all way better. But, uh, they cost more. So, um, I hope looking at the markers, watching me color with the, like, scribble with them a little bit, demonstrate them for you. I, I hope that answered any questions that my posts might not have answered. Um, if you have any mm, specific questions that were not answered by my posts or this video or any of the other videos I put out, Please send me an email or leave me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Have a good day, guys. Bye.